Hello YouTube, my name is Patrick and this is my channel 1984. Today I have my own motherboard here. It's uh, broken because I broke it. So, uh, what happened with this motherboard was that I was testing a graphics card, a 6600 GT, a GeForce card. It's an old one. They exist for AGP, but that was the PCA version. So I was testing that because I had it donated and it's broken. So what happened uh, on this motherboard and how I broke it is the front panel header is over here. So you have uh, obviously a power and reset. So I uh, have my reset pins over here, two of them. So they are over here. So if you would touch those, they would reset the computer. And you have a power pins here. And the Asus have this adapter here. Uh, this adapter is like a quick disconnect adapter. So you could connect all your front panel stuff to this and if you ever want to take out the motherboard you could just connect this whole thing. So it just goes into the front panel header like so. And the problem is, and I actually did that right now, and as you can see, just by touching it I bent the pin there. These pins are very soft. I have a tendency to bend apparently. So it seems, I've, it took me a while to figure out exactly, but uh, it seems when I put this in my box because I got there in a box. I have this sitting here and then I put it in the ASD bag and in the box and I have the accessories. So these tend to get bent apparently. So what happened was because you have a you have a power here and this has ground next to it. So we know that pin over here is ground. Uh, this side here we got the speaker. So it's just five volt over here. Now there is not a pin in there, it's an empty hole, it's because I ripped it out. But that pin had bent over to this pin opposite it. And that pin is ground. So now we've got, oops, sorry. So now we've got five volt facing ground. And you also have ground next to here. So it, basically this five volt is like half surrounded by ground. And it seems like there's no protection. So it's like straight up five volt from the rail to ground. So this pin was slightly bent over, not completely, it wasn't touching the ground here, but when I touched this, this one bent over enough, so there was a spark between them, the one that is now missing, that I removed, and this one, and that basically tripped the power supply. So I was like, okay, might be fine, so I did try starting the computer again after cycling the power supply, I had to shut it off and on, it did start for about uh, 20 seconds. Then the fans died and nothing worked anymore. It does turn on, so you have a power LED here, so you can like turn the power supply on via the motherboard. So you can touch the power and ground and it will turn on the power supply and then everything else, but there is absolutely no life on the computer. I have put a postcard in it. So yeah, what I initially did was just like troubleshoot this area and tracing other things. Figure maybe the problem was here and I didn't find anything wrong over here. So then what I did was actually I started touching like ICs because I noticed uh, the fans weren't running. They got three volts. That's not enough to turn them over. So the fans weren't running and I noticed that nothing got hot. So I'm like, I could even remove the CPU cooler. It didn't, the CPU didn't get hot. So I measured the V core and it was like 300 millivolts or something. I've called it multimeter. It was like basically no V core there. So everything was cold except basically one thing and that's the ship over here this ship gets stupid hot i burnt myself because it registered over 90 centigrade on my infrared thermometer so this ship is an ite uh, it8712f uh, controller and this is like the brain of the computer you used to say this, this cpu is but this controls the whole motherboard so I can bring up the data sheet for this on the on the monitor here. So I have the data sheet for the IT8712F ship here, so we can actually see what it is. So it says it's an environmental control low pin count input output device. So we can start to figure out what it is here. So features, so low pin count. You see ACPI version 1 for those, so people will probably be familiar with that and that. So, yeah, and I, I say specifications. So this is basically the brains of the motherboard. So we've got the built-in analog digital converter here for hardware monitoring. 
so it can monitor hardware like voltages, fans, stuff like that. And like I said, the fans stopped working, for example. So we have volt eight voltage monitoring inputs. VBAT is measured internally. So yeah, so it can read your voltages. Case fan open detection. And it provides read zero to read five support for CPU. So that explains why my CPU isn't getting a V core because it's the CPU isn't told what V core to actually run. So the, the PLL on the motherboard that controls V core is as far as I can tell, it's not being programmed, so there's no weak code for the CPU. Fan speed controller would explain why our fans aren't working anymore. So now I've got two UARTs here, a standard serial port. Uh, parallel port, floppy disk controller, keyboard controller, so basically everything you expect the motherboard to do for you is broken. So it's uh, it's the motherboard. So yeah. So we need to replace this ship. So, I have uh, connected the motherboard. I'm gonna turn over the monitor to the D sub here and connect my monitor to the built in graphics on this motherboard. So, it has built in graphics because this is an AMD 785 chipset. So, yeah, so we've got one stick of RAM, one CPU, power, an ATX connector, postcard, and like I said, built in graphics. So let's turn this thing on here. And as you can see, we get nothing on the displays. So, yeah, nothing is happening. And the CPU is cold as the switch winter. So, yeah, let's uh, look at the ship. So, this is our ship that is overheating. I know one of these ships should run at about 30 centigrade. It should definitely not be boiling water. So let's see what this is doing. So we're at uh, 8 centigrade now. And it's been on for like 30, 40 seconds. Mm, it's 88 now. So yeah, it's getting up there in the 90s, I think. Yeah, 90s. So that thing is uh, dead inside. So we have to replace it and hopefully that's the only problem. I have some new ships here from eBay, so we can uh, replace the broken one. And also I checked other motherboards and other motherboard and they have not done this kind of, I would say bad design because you can quite literally put say a reset button between the ground and power and people connect these things wrong all the time. So it's kind of like a, it's not a idiot proof design let's put it that way. So I'm kind of annoyed by how this motherboard broke and if you ever had a question can you break your motherboard through the front panel header yes you can and I asked around it's very uncommon but uh, well, someone told me he did that same thing to a quad socket optron board in 2010 so suppose I don't have to cry as much I would be crying a lot if I did that back then but yeah so anyway new ships uh, we're gonna try to get them on there before we actually try to remove this, we have to use hot air. We have to protect all these components here, all these connectors. They're gonna melt otherwise. So what I'm making is just a piece of paper. I'm gonna cover it in uh, tin foil and captain tape. But it's gonna serve as like a protection device for these slots. So I have to make a couple of them. And the reason I'm using paper is that it will like serve as like an insulator. And aluminium contact seats quite well and uh, even if this gets burned we don't care it's just paper and it's kind of like gonna work like an ablative coating uh, so when it gets burnt off it actually keeps the backside cool somewhat uh, you can look up, up ablative co uh, cooling or coating but that's my idea and I used this before on say a, a, like a slot like a cap like this this is uh, true hole but if you have a surf mount like that and a few small ones next to an AGP slot, like right up to it. And this works fine. I could remove it with hot air. I can add a new one with hot air. Uh, was no problem. So, yeah, I found it to work quite well. So I just get some kitchen tin foil. So, yeah, that is one. I have to do at least another one plus uh, one for this. Maybe I could pull this off, but I won't try. And then I would probably just take them down, or you can. You can secure them however you want. You just want to make sure they don't go. Whoops. So. Yep. Yeah. 
the, and the motherboard is on the board heater here. It's around 78 degrees on that ship now. Uh, my board heat is a little bit too small for this. But uh, better than nothing. It's gonna help. So let's remove this ship here. Well, I should have protected the car. No, I killed another thing on my motherboard. Oh, okay. Uh, how did I forget that one? Well, apparently, that's what happens.
the motherboard is under the microscope here. And I got the new ships here. So I'm going to unpack one of these ITE ships here. You won't be able to see the whole uh, ship because uh, I can't zoom out enough. This is minimum zoom on the microscope. Yeah, that exploring cap was kind of funny. I almost shit myself. And what I get for being stupid and missing it. But uh, it's just a cap, so we'll fix that later. Once we got this in place, we can add a new cap. So that should hold it in place for now. So this is the tight side with the PCI slots. This is gonna be tricky. I'm gonna do my best. Give it a lot of flux so hopefully everything flows. thing is that the sort of follows the heat so that's why I'm working it through the corner by moving the heat that way the iron and this follows it's the plan
So, seems like we're all good for testing. We just need to add the cap. Well, it should work without that cap, but we're gonna add one anyway. The motherboard is back together again. And the new chip, and I put the cap here. Uh, identical one, but it's blue. Same values otherwise, uh, from a donor card that this did. So yeah, this is our old ship here. It's quite annoying to get up actually, because it's not, uh, they use lead-free solder on these boards, and it's uh, sunk a lot of heat even with the uh, board heater. And I don't want to rip the pads, I want uh, like the, the, all that solder to be fluid, and uh, yeah, it took a lot of heat. So I think that's also why this one blew up, because I had higher temperatures than I usually do, and a lot higher airflow. Uh, yeah. And uh, you yeah, should probably not use the nozzle, but uh, then you can't really see anything. Then I have to film from the side, which kind of works, and it's not that, but yeah. Uh, so yeah, that was a bit of an oversight. And apparently, this is what it looks like inside. I still haven't found the cap, because it apparently hit the camera, and then bounced on the floor, I think. And then away somewhere, so I don't know where it is. Somewhere, I'll probably find it. I don't know if these are dry ones or not. Um, I suppose even dry ones might be able to explode from heat and uh, the electrolytic ones are sure to these could be wet or uh, hybrid but I'm not sure anyways that was interesting mistake but it's just a cap so who cares and uh, this slot here this one is slightly ever so it looks like it's like soot on it slightly but that's the I got away with it a uh, lot, uh, almost, like 95%. You wouldn't even know unless you actually looked at it. So, so yeah, let's test the board. Motherboard is hooked up and I put a heatsink on it. If it works, I need that. And my, uh, uh, some power buttons so I don't kill it again the same way. And let's uh, see here, I think I don't need it, but I should put a CMOS battery in if it works. Let's put one in here. I can save my settings. And I got postcard, just in case it doesn't work, or doesn't work fully. Uh, yeah, I think uh, we might. Yeah, should probably connect some uh, keyboard and mice. What do I have it? there? And put that on so we can actually use that. So now we're ready to try a thing. Some power. Power light is on. With postcodes. That's awesome. Keyboard is up. Gonna move over here to see if I can. Now we got F1 here to enter it up. Uh, so it's working. Yeah. I need to configure the BIOS so we can actually boot something and uh, turn that fan down. Harder monitoring. Uh, CPU temperature 25C. 5000 RPM on the CPU fan. Set it to enable and set some temperatures here. The fan should calm down. That does. No good device, but I can connect one, so that's no problem. So I hooked up a Windows 10 hard drive. Yeah, when the sun is booting, there's only two gigs of RAM and this CPU is super slow. It's like, like a Atlon 2X215, so that's 2.7, or 2.6 gigahertz, I think. And uh, half a mega cache. It's uh, yeah, only two gigs of RAM, it's gonna be slow. It works, but it's slow. And we have, I don't even think Windows 10 support the onboard graphics, which is HD. 4200. I think you can probably use like Vista drivers or something and it usually works. But, uh, yeah. But the card is it, itself, the motherboard seems to be working, so that's good. So 
So let's uh, check the temp on the ship now and see what it is. 28.8 30.6 So yeah, just to check for variation But yeah, around 30 degrees mm, Which I expected from checking on other boards The problem was I didn't have that board with that particular ship So I had to buy them And I bought two of them And then the Swedish Castle decided to uh, find me for customs and toll Despite I paid it once before So that I became Twice as expensive when I used one, so yeah. But I do like these motherboards uh, because uh, you got built in graphics with 128 megabytes of RAM, so you don't have to use the motherboard RAM. It's an AMT motherboard, so it doesn't take FX CPUs, but I mean, it has PCIe, PCI, PCI two of them. It's good cooling, so there's nothing particularly wrong with the board. It's a very good board for testing, and uh, the thing is, when you test stuff sometimes, you kind of break them. So yeah, but I broke this one after blowing it up once too, so yeah. But uh, thank you for watching and have a nice day. If you want to follow us, you can go to our social media webpage, braindrainlan.tk and pick your favorite platform. Link is in the description. You can join us on our Discord server. We host public LANs when possible and game nights on our server hosting many old classical multiplayer games like Quake, Counter Strike and much more. Or you can show off your own retro LAN or maybe visit our members private LAN parties. We have a galleries, benchmark channels where you can post images, videos of your retro hardware and your scores and much more. So come and join us and share your retro experience with us. Thank you for watching and have a nice day.